Um, obviously, this this is concerned with cannibalism that occurs before mating. Um, we call it pre-copulatory cannibalism. Um, I often split different forms of this into pre-copulatory and non-copulatory cannibalism. And what I mean by that is that non-copulatory cannibalism is still kind of, um, you know, it still occurs around the mating event. It's still a, a male and a female involved of the same species, but the male is unable to, to copulate in that interaction. So cannibalism will occur, the female will attack the male, um, but he's unable to copulate within that interaction. Whereas pre-copulatory cannibalism occurs, still the onset of cannibalism occurs prior to copulation, but the male is somehow able to start mating while he's being eaten. And that's what happens in my mantids, and I'll show you a video in a second. Um, but they're, they're, in a lot of literature, they're both termed pre-copulatory. Um, but I kind of th think that pre-copulatory insinuates that copulation occurs at some point. So I, I call it non-copulatory if, um, if the male doesn't get to mate. Um, so you can imagine how this can have little, if any, advantage to the male. Um, it, it, it might, in a, in a pre-copulatory sense, if he at least gets this one mating, um, it's potentially adva advantageous for him. I'll tell you how in a second. But if it's non-copulatory, there's really no advantage for him. Um, he's not even able to mate just that once. Um, and this, this um, non-copulatory cannibalism occurs in fishing spiders. It also occurs in my mantids. Both of these occur. Um, so in these fishing spiders, the, um, the female is a little bit larger than the male, and uh, she, she often cannibalizes males and just eats them. They don't get to mate at all. Um, but it only occurs uh, in a, you know, maybe 10, 15, 20 percent, I can't remember the exact number, but a lowish number, but high enough to be significant. In these, in my mantids, this is an example of non-copulatory cannibalism. You can see this big female here. She's already polished off half of this male, um, but he's not mating. So she's just eaten him and for some reason he's been unable to begin copulation. Um, so as I said, in, in these mantids and in many other mantid species, both of these types of, of um, cannibalism occur. Sometimes uh, the, the female will always attack before mating and then it's really up to the male whether he can um, begin copulation. And if he can't, it's non-copulatory. If he can, it's pre-copulatory cannibalism. And they occur, uh, they occur in, in about the same frequency. So about half the males that are attacked are able to begin copulating. Is that a question? Yeah. yeah. So the picture that you showed before in the mantis, did she start eating him before? Yes, they always do. Yeah, sorry. The question was, did she start eating him in this previous slide, that one? Um, did she start eating him before? And the answer, in this species and in many species of mantid, the attack is always before. Um, copulation. So this is an example of pre-copulatory because the male was able to mate and this is an example of non-copulatory because the male wasn't able to mate. I haven't been able to find any trait, male trait, that kind of can predict whether males are able to, to begin copulation. Um, yeah, but I mean the male himself. You know, I can't, uh, any physical attribute of the male, I thought maybe, you know, the longer males would be able to kind of get around and I'll show you why that might be. Um, but I haven't been able to find that. So the only thing that I've been able to kind of, um, it, it seems to be the, where the female grabs him. If she grabs him around the head, he's got the rest of his body to kind of manipulate and to get around and start copulating. But if she grabs him around the thorax, he's kind of done for. He can't really move at all. So, yeah. Um, okay, so this is cannibalism in the fishing spider, just to give you, because this is a kind of um, uncommon example, uh, because there's, there's well, that we, they found, these, these researchers found no benefit for the males, um, which is kind of, you know, expected. Um, but they, what was weird is that they found no benefit for the female either. So, uh, the female didn't produce more or larger eggs as a result of eating the male. Um, and they found a cost, actually, because many females remained unmated. 
So virgin females didn't didn't obtain any matings if they obviously if they cannibalised all the potential males. Um, so these researchers proposed that this behaviour is actually maladaptive, um, and they suggested that it's which was weird. You know, you don't kind of expect a maladaptive behaviour to to persist in a population. Um, so they dug a little further, and they suggested that they think it's it's. Um, the behaviour is advantageous as a juvenile. So juvenile females, um, uh, there's selection for this aggressive behaviour as juveniles because aggressive, ju uh, aggressive juveniles obtain more food, they get bigger, they're then able to have more young as adults and all that kind of thing. Um, but it didn't, it didn't translate into um, an advantage as an adult. Uh, so they thought that there was some gene that kind of just you know, coded for aggression in general and that aggressive females couldn't switch that off as adults. Aggressive juveniles couldn't switch it off as adults. Um, so you would expect a male counter strategy in this scenario, but uh, they kind of just mentioned this without actually showing any data for it actually having evolved. So I suppose we would expect that this would evolve at some point in the future. But this is kind of a, um, an uncommon example to find that there's no there's no um, you know, advantage to anyone. playing properly, it kind of keeps skipping, I don't know. But anyway, you get the general gist of it. So she'll start kind of eating, he's trying his best to, they kind of look like they're kissing, but they're not. She's eating his antennae and... And so you can see that he starts to, like because she's got him at the top here, oh God, the top here, he's able to use the rest of his body and he's grabbed onto her and you can see, he's, we call it S-bending, the end of his abdomen, he's kind of searching for her. And so she'll just continue to eat. And you can, she's kind of eating his neck now and his head falls off at the end of the thing. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, so you can see his, his legs are kind of, so he's grabbing her abdomen so he can grab on and basically she'll just continue eating and I won't keep going with the video but he's successful in the end. So he finds her abdomen, starts copulating and she continues to eat and that will go on for hours and hours. It does. Except this thing's there. Oh, there we go. Sorry, the bit, it's skipping. You can't really see it. But anyway, no, it's not like that when it's. I think it's, I think I saved the. Um, oh, okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> No, no, no. Um, so, oh, where did I get up to? I'll tell you in one second. <laughs> um, there, there. All right. All right. So, um, so this is just a, a, a summary of, you know, cannibalism in these in these mantids. Um, so, even though the attack occurs before copulation, they about half the males that are attacked, as I said, um, manage to copulate. Um, only about 40% of males are attacked, so about 60% of them um, just mate and you know fly away and and mate another day. Um, so uh, because many many of the males do manage to copulate, even if they're cannibalised, the cost is reduced because obviously some of them still get at least that one mating. 
um, but males still have no future matings. Even the ones that get that one mating still have no future mating. So there's got to be some cost. Um, so what I found in terms of the advantage of cannibalism here is that cannibalistic females lay significantly heavier egg cases um, and this translates into the number of offspring. So the heavier egg cases obviously have more eggs and, and more offspring hatch from that. Um, I don't know if you can see this graph here, but this is um, uh, female body condition versus um, the egg case mass. So you can see that the, the heavier the female, the, there's quite a nice positive relationship to the, the mass of the uotheca, which is the egg case, that she will, she will lay. So you know, the more you eat, the more males you cannibalise, the heavier you become, um, and the bigger the egg case that you lay. So that's the advantage. Um, and it's quite a big, ex big advantage. Um, I found that the females lay about 40%, um, will have 40% more offspring um, just from one cannibalistic um, occurrence. So by eating one male, they have 40% more offspring. So that's pretty huge, um, which kind of tells us why they do this, yeah? Um, there was no cannibalism if the females were well fed um, and there was pretty much 100% cannibalism if they were poorly fed. So they, they're the two extremes, obviously it generally occurs in the middle, um, but hunger is a big, uh, plays a big part in cannibalism in, these species, in this species and this suggests to me that females use cannibalism as a foraging strategy um, to increase their fecundity um, if they can, you know, feed a different way, um, maybe they don't bother. So if there's lots of prey around, um, maybe cannibalism, the frequency of cannibalism decreases. So it, you know, there's, there's an ecological kind of significance as well. Um, so, and this is just to, uh, to, a lot of people think that cannibalism in mantids is a prerequisite to mating, but it's not. So as I said to you, 60% of males actually cannibalize, uh, sorry, copulate without being cannibalized. So it's not, um, it's not a prerequisite, it's actually, you know, um, the minority of them are actually cannibalised. Um, and this is the, to answer someone's question from before, the male is alive through the whole thing. Um, so males can continue mating for many hours uh, without a head because the genitals are controlled by a secondary nerve knot in the, in the abdomen. So mantids have two brains, one in the head, one in the abdomen and lots of functions are controlled by the second um, abdominal nerve knot. Um, particularly if the head's gone, all function goes, like all control of function goes to the secondary nerve knot. So these males actually, um, they're actually still alive at the end and they can walk away with no head um, and they'll die from starvation, but they're still alive. And that's how they can transfer sperm. I don't know. Um, that's one. The question was, is that something that's evolved because of cannibalism? Um, you know, potentially. I, I don't know. Um, yep. Yeah. Well, they're their cousins. Cockroaches are the closest relative to mantids, so um, they also have this two-brain thing, um, but they don't cannibalise. So maybe it was there for you know for some other reason first, and then it's just allowed cannibalism to to evolve or be maintained. Yep. Is it more likely for an insect to um, eat the, the, the other insects of the male before copulating if there's not much of a side difference between them because it's going to be hard to get the male before he runs off? Yeah, well, one of the kind of, um, I suppose, the, the necessities of being, you know, in a, in a, um, cannibalistic mating system seems to be size dimorphism so that the female has to be you know somewhat bigger than the male it generally is the female that's cannibalizing um, and it's always it seems to always be that it's in you know systems that have quite at least moderate sexual size dimorphism in the spiders it's much more pronounced so there's these tiny little spiders that are obviously you know easy to overcome in the mantids yeah, they're, well, they're